Welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. I'm TNT Don. I'm like the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. So, are you familiar with Bitcoin? Am I familiar with Bitcoin, Jonas? I mean, we know you got like 30 Bitcoin in your wallet. Like, you know that uh, I'm familiar with Bitcoin so, and um, cryptocurrency. They, they just approved uh-huh. a Bitcoin ETF this week. Okay. Do you know what that means? Um, well, I can answer your question with the, with the answer that you desire. Uh, do I know what that means? No. But that is also the answer to if I give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that works. Fair. No, but continue, Fair. continue, continue. Okay. So, so essentially what a Bitcoin ETF is, is like hedge funds and like the stock, you can trade, essentially you can trade a Bitcoin ETF via the stock market and you don't have to own any Bitcoin. So like the price of this ETF goes up and down based on the, the futures and what Bitcoin's price is, yada, yada. And you can gain exposure to Bitcoin without actually having to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> Anyways. So, I'm sorry, it was rude, but at the same time, warranted. Right. So it's been this huge buildup that it, like, you know, the SEC is the firm that like regulates all the securities sure. and everything. So there's been this huge buildup as if they were going to approve these ETFs or not. Oh, eh? okay. So what happened was on Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday of this week. Uh huh. The SEC's Twitter account posts a, a tweet that says. ETFs approved. Bitcoin price goes up. Nice. Real quick. And then 10 minutes later, they tweet out, we were hacked, and the price drops 10%. Nice. Immediately. Nice. So, so the, the company that is supposed to enhance the markets and make sure they're fair and not manipulated caused a... Like it was like a four percent swing up and a ten percent swing down in ten minutes. That's a lot of money. That's that... a. Lo- they said they said one billion dollars was lost. Yeah. In that in that time frame, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's two parts to this. This this is, that was just the the like kind of laying the ground. The two things I want to talk about about this one is they released a statement saying they literally have to investigate themselves for market manipulation now because of what happened. Yep. And the second part, Twitter did their own investigation about what happened to the account. So the SEC, which is supposed to be the super secure, like whatever, they someone compromised one of their phone numbers and mm. and that's how they got access to the account. So they didn't even have like two-factor authentication like set up where they have to get the text to like whatever and they're the fuck literally the fucking entity that like regulates what is and is not and can and cannot be done. bro is it's like equifax man the people with the information are bound to fuck up with it man the people with the information the knowledge the power to do such a thing they're bound to fumble the power of that ball one time. That's that's insane though. That's Dude, a lot of money. Yeah, like and you know, now and, well, and the funny part was the next day they literally approved them for real. So so then did it, did it shoot back up again or are people more uh, hesitant? I mean this like cuz you know they always say sell the news, right? Yeah. Um so then it went up and you know Bitcoin's very volatile anyway, so it's been up and down. It's kind of like bouncing in a range right now anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just, it was like it's just so funny. It's like they're so looking out for the consumer and like manipulation and Are whatever. They though? Because I mean, that's what they say. Like to me, it seems like you're not looking out for the consumer because if you're going to approve the ability for whatever the fuck we're talking about to happen the next day, then why don't you just keep your mouth shut and just let people have their their trades for the first day? If it's less than twenty four hours oh, away, no, just because be then like, they can't have it all set up for people to manipulate it right. Yeah. They weren't ready to announce it on Tuesday. It's so early. someone else got the goddamn jump. So early informed trading is good when it's us and we know about it, but when it's you, oh, they have people that track Congress's stock trades. There was one congresswoman who outperformed mm. every hedge fund by like sixty five percent. Oh, interesting. And like, works. oh, how funny! You know all this info about things that are happening in the world, and you're making ridiculous stock trades. There's mm. actually people online that because they because when they 
make trades. They have to they have to file forms with the government. Yeah. They track all of their trades and put them out so everyone else can see because they know like they're probably going to go up. If they're selling, they know something where it's probably going to drop soon. If they're buying, it's probably going to go up soon because they have insider information that everyone else goes to jail for, but they don't. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. Do, is there a way that I can get this information? Uh, it's online. Yeah, it's just like some Twitter account that's like follow. But what's really funny is they're they're putting out a guise that they're trying to pass laws that Congress people can't trade stocks. I think it's a very legit. Like there's senators who make like they, I don't even know what their salary is like fifty k, two hundred k, whatever. But their net worth is like Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She makes whatever it is. Her net worth is like five million dollars. Yep. Like because she stock trades and does other things. Get you know it's like. So, yeah, and I mean, look, and that's not to say is that stock trading isn't something that we all have access to, but it's the fact that the they also have access to a lot of the company rate. heads and the lobbyists that are affiliated with the companies that they're trading with, and there's well, no right. conflict of interest oh, there. Oh, a thousand percent. Like, they know if we're about to go bomb a country and start a war, all the defense stocks are going to skyrocket because they're going to exactly. make a bunch of money. Exactly. Like, there was, there's proof that they there was a ton of... St Congress people who sold stocks mm. right before they announced the world shut down for COVID mm. because they knew it was going to crash the fucking market, but they sold early. And there's like proof that like so and so called his brother and told him to sell his stocks and like shit like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, none of them go to jail for what, insider trading. Okay, so with that knowledge being in hand, Jones, what if you work for I don't know, you work for Allstate, okay? And you find and you hear through the company Grapeline that uh, your company is thinking about buying, I don't know, another insurance company, let's say State Farm. Right. And then uh, it, would it be like illegal for you to I like, could go to jail for that. Oh, like if you work for a corporation yeah. and you have information that um, is not public knowledge and you use it for your gain, you can go to jail. But they do it in the government all the time. Exactly. Oh, okay. Like, I, I, I do happen to work for a corporation, and I have to send out some reports, and I literally, in one of my reports, have to say, some of the information in this report is not public knowledge. Be careful if you're, like, there's a, there's a disclaimer I have to put in my report to who I'm sending it to, because they know stuff that is not public knowledge that... It's reflected. Like I can right. buy my company stock through 401k because like it's just an automatic buy all the time. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like it would look very fishy if I knew that like all of a sudden our results sucked, but I knew that before they announced it. And the week before that I sold let's say I had ten thousand shares, I sold all ten thousand shares and then knew and then then two weeks later bought it all back because it dropped. All right. What like, what if you told me some of the information and I made it would be less likely, but then we could both go to jail. How am I going to jail? Because you're using insider information. I don't know anything. I'm just making guesses. <laughs> you you have very a very close relationship with someone who works here, and you just happen to buy thirty thousand dollars worth of stock you, right you before. Can't, you can't prove anything. Yeah, Good but you luck. know what? The it's, government put Martha Stewart in jail. They'll put anybody in jail. I heard except him. for people who work for the government. Is what if I hear you yelling in your office and now? No, there's got to be a work around this, dude. They're doing it. How can I do it? Go be a congressman. Nah, fam. Work, hey, listen. When you work for the people, you get the perk of knowing things before other people know it with you don't immunity. Really, you don't really know. I mean, fine, sure. Yeah, I guess so. They probably know in Congress about the aliens. They probably know about cryptocurrency. Well, they stocks. but they know about bills that are going to pass that affect industries. They know all sorts of stuff like that. So, like, they can preemptively, like... If like say for example like like Nvidia the chip maker right like we all know who Nvidia is they make video cards like all that shit sure like say they were gonna crack down on the on the in remember forever they were in shortage and they were super high priced and like whatever like say they were gonna crack down on those companies because they knew they were price gouging right yeah, yeah, and yeah. Congress is about to vote that in and they own the stock they know it's gonna negatively affect the price because they're gonna restrict their profit they can sell all their shares before the dump. Yeah, that's what I would do. And that's and that's insider information. I mean, but what if it's your son? Can your son do your trades? <laughs> You're work? best off having a random stranger do it. I'm basically, we're strangers, basically, right? 
You're pretty no strange. one would associate us together ever. Never. Not once. You're They're pretty... like, don't you have like 3,000 episodes of videos on the internet? I don't know who he is. You're a strange boy. He barely knows it. He, I barely know him. <laughs> I've seen him like twice. Seen I've him seen once him. or twice, you know? Yeah. So, but anyways, I just thought it was really funny that, you know, the they didn't even have two-factor authentication where you have to get the text code <laughs> to put it into for security on their own effing Twitter account. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, the, the the more and more information that's out there, the information is the most valuable commodity that there is around here, man. I agree. So, anyways, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Uh, please make sure to like and subscribe for a Jonas. TNT. Oh, uh, yeah.